Hey everyone, in today's video, let's talk about how to deal with negative emotions. This is the step-by-step -step guide to being able to use those negative emotions that come into your life, for example, sadness, anger, you know, despair, all those type of negative emotions that really have, I guess you'd say this negative connotation or vibration to them if you want to go that far. Um, how to, uh, I guess, really embrace those in your life and actually use them for uh, a positive outlet in your life. So uh, that's going to be the topic of today's video. We're going to be diving into it. The main reason we're diving into it today is because sadly, um, my little dog uh, that I've shown on the channel a couple times is the in the little doggy hospital and it's been making me kind of sad throughout the day and whatnot. And I thought this was an important subject because uh, the last time I made this video and it got, accidentally got deleted so it never got posted was uh, when I was going through... Um, you know, I guess another wave of getting over my previous relationship where you're like missing that person and you're sad. And I, I and I explained a few things about that, that on that previous video that I have to recap. So uh, at that time, I was really missing this person. And um, instead of, you know, running back to the relationship, I really was able to dive deep into the motion and come out stronger on the other side. So I'm going to be talking to you about that because I think it is so common in today's society to just completely disregard emotions as they're, um, as in, especially for men, which is going to be another video I'll make about disregarding emotions as if they don't mean anything and i just think that's completely wrong so uh let's go ahead and dive into that in today's video if you like this content uh by the end of the video please consider subscribing and supporting me as a creator on patreon so that i can do this channel full-time for you guys um okay let's go ahead and dive into it the very first step and i'm going to try to lay this down in three simple steps is that um you have to recognize that negative emotions aren't actually bad for you. I think it's very common to see negative emotions as bad emotions. And when you start placing this judgment on negative emotions as being bad, then what happens is that you try to avoid them. And by tr avoiding these emotions, you're actually denying a personal truth that you are feeling on the inside. And it's important to recognize that really every emotion that you're feeling is really just leading you towards a personal truth. And this is important for you on a broader level rather than any time that you're dealing with a, a negative situation. But sometimes there's even smaller things. Maybe you're feeling an emotion on the inside and you... Uh, you know, let's say, for example, maybe you're feeling angry and some people are telling you to be, you know, nice in a certain situation, or maybe you're feeling a really intense emotion and people are telling you that you're being over dramatic and that type of stuff. And they're trying to almost invalidate the feeling that you are feeling when really what is being told to you is there's this personal truth there that either must be expressed or must be understood. understood. And what I've come to find out recently about these negative emotions that maybe seem to now have a negative connotation around them and being seen as bad, really it's almost like this strategy of pushing them away so that we don't have to feel them because I mean, we call them negative emotions for a reason, right? They don't feel as good as positive emotions. Positive emotions is like, that's what everybody wants to uh, get more of. And, um, you know, our brain itself pushes us away from pain and pulls us towards pleasure. And it's in our uh, psychology to get away from negative emotions in a way, but I think it's important to recognize that as these negative emotions pop up in your life, it's actually important to not push them away because if you push them away, then you are not going to be able to understand them and deal with them properly. This is something that I think I should have mentioned in my video that I was talking about why a narcissist will purposely trigger you. And this is to get an emotional reaction for you. And here's the thing. The only reason why a narcissist would want to purposely trigger you, for example, to get an emotional reaction for you is because then you lose control and you enter into an emotional state where you're not um, fully in control of your actions, I guess you could say. Well, you're not in the most... Um, prolific state to be able to take control and assert your life in the direction that you want to take it. So when you um, are trying to 
push away these negative emotions. And for example, let's say you've been triggered. The real issue that is being caused here is that you maybe you're not understanding why you're triggered in the first place. So anytime this negative emotion, if you come and you try to look at these emotions as bad, you are going to push them away. And that will, all that it will do is it will make you miss the opportunity that you have at your hand to understand why you feel a way that you feel what personal truth inside of you is there that must be understood and that is essentially crying out for attention. So now so let's move on to step number two of this three step process. The first one is that you cannot see them as bad. You actually want to embrace them for what they are. Don't, you know, don't reject them. Don't, oh, don't invalidate them. Embrace them as they are, as they're coming through, uh, as you're feeling them, accept them for what they are. Now, the very next step is going to be actually to dive into the emotion and to sit with it and you know, I almost hate when people say to like, just be present with the emotion to a certain sense, because I feel like it can get lost in, in translation. When I hear this, here's what I think with being present with an emotion is that you're not, again, you're not trying to shove it away. You're just sitting with it. And in my opinion, you're trying to fully feel what it feels like and then trying to understand it. It's very easy if you do not try to understand your emotion to think that maybe you're feeling something when there's actually, I would say a lot of times that if I sit with my emotion and I'm trying to understand what something is coming up inside of me, if I am not present with the emotion, I'm not going to fully understand it. So what we're really trying to do here is get you to understand this emotion. We're trying to get you to understand what is triggering it. What is coming up inside of you? What is that personal truth that is, trying to be expressed. And, you know, for example, I'm going to give you two examples right here, like with my dog that is right now in the little doggy hospital. Um, you know, he's in there and, and when I sit with that emotion, I just think of all, you know, all the amazing times I've had with my life and with him. And there's really the only personal truth that he, I feel like I'm trying to feel in this situation is how much I love him. When I was thinking about the times that uh, with my previous girlfriend and that relationship and when it was ending, the reason I was sad is because like, I know she's going on like this vacation and like, you know, and me just being a guy, I know that she's a beautiful girl and a lot of guys are going to talk to her and all that stuff. And it made me sad on the inside. And when I sat with that emotion and I was trying to understand it, what I really understood actually was that I was, at that moment feeling insignificant and because i was feeling insignificant at that moment there was really two ways to being able to deal with it because i sat with that emotion i felt you know for example the the pain in my chest and my stomach twirling and i sat with it and i didn't try to push it away and i didn't get all crazy about it i just really tried to understand it i stood that i was feeling in, uh, insignificant and whereas a quick um responsive reaction would be to reach out to that relationship to try to fix things and like you know run back into the relationship to fix put a band-aid on the wound what i really tried to understand was that instead of trying to just put a band-aid on the wound it was actually time to you know heal the wound and understand that if i wanted to feel significance and that is the emotion that i was lacking or or the the need that i wasn't getting at that time maybe running back to the relationship was not the proper option so actually what i could do was look for another solution somewhere else in order to fulfill my human need of significance that i was needing at that time and significance being one of the six core needs of the human emotions I think it was really important to take the time to understand why that whole trigger made me feel that certain way. And I was actually able to fulfill that need in a different way. So the main reason why you want to sit with your emotions is to try to understand them and to try to understand what need is really not being met and why you are feeling that to begin with. And if I wanted to create even more long-term healing, when I was feeling this need for significance, I can even go as far as asking myself, 
when was the first time that I had felt this emotion? And by digging deep and trying to understand when was the first time that I had felt this insignificant, I could actually look at the first time I had felt this wound and to try to understand myself even more, to try to see why I am the type of human that I am. And this goes back to, you know, this the whole psychology aspect of working with your inner child and stuff. And it's, you're, you're really going to notice if you ask yourself, what's the first time you felt an emotion? What seems to happen is you'll have a certain memory pop up and it'll, and all that information gets stored in your body. And it's so cool. And you get to dig back deep into your memory banks and understand yourself even more in a really cool way. The next thing that I do when I'm trying to deal with a negative emotion in the third step is that after I've sat with it and I'm not rushing it to go away, I'm not trying to push it away because I'm not seeing it as a bad emotion. I'm just understanding it as a personal truth that is going on at that moment. The next thing that I do is I will patiently sit with it as long as I need until I am finally ready to do something to change my emotional state. Sometimes that happens naturally where by sitting with your emotion and understanding it, just the simple fact that you understood it and you sat with it and now that you get it, it's almost like you are, um, you are rewarded with more understanding of your inner self. And because you're rewarded with that, you feel even better that you took the time to not push this emotion away. And then, um, by giving yourself, so by giving yourself permission to move forward with that event, with uh, changing your emotional state and feeling better. It's really cool because if that happens naturally, you're set to go, but there's other times when maybe you need to give yourself permission finally to move on forward from that emotion. And you have to be willing to be patient enough with yourself to sit there as long as you need. And then think of and brainstorm certain ways or certain solutions that you can use to fulfill the needs that your negative emotions are bringing up to you that must be met. Maybe sometimes that was simply just sitting with the emotion and that's it. Maybe sometimes you just need to have an off day. Maybe sometimes you want to have a little bit of quiet time to yourself, or maybe you want to plan a whole vacation for yourself, or you want to buy yourself a new car, whatever solution comes to your head. If you can find a healthy way of now fulfilling the need that you were missing, you will be now able to live your life in a new way. When I, the example that I just gave you was my previous girlfriend where she was going on this trip and I was feeling insignificant. What I realized, you know, was that I wanted to fulfill my need of significance. And what was really awesome actually now that I even think about it is one of the things that I did is also making this video for you right now because it's really cool and it's really amazing this community that we're building inside of this YouTube channel and outside of it it's so incredible and it makes me so happy to be able to record something like this for you and post it on there and I have some of you guys that are so incredible and you guys are so active and you're commenting on every video you're liking all of them and, and your guys's words are really changing my life and it really does help fulfill that need of significance you guys make me feel loved and that is part of why I love making these videos for you guys you guys actually really help my life as a whole and I hope that I get to do the same for you guys. And because I'm consciously aware of how I felt at that time, now part of it is I get to record this video for you. Maybe I get to go out and do other stuff. Uh, one of the other things that I did, you know, at that time to help fulfill my need of feeling insignificant um, at that time was I actually took some time for myself to plan out what my next goals and whatnot that I wanted to accomplish. I actually ended up getting selling my old car and buying myself a new one. I didn't need a new one anyway, but all these things, they really just help feed into uh, understanding myself and treating myself with the significance that I was looking for rather than depending on, for example, that relationship with her. And now you know, communing with you guys and getting to communicate with you guys really is changing my life. And that's another way of 
meeting that need. So um, that would be the three-step process of how to deal with these negative emotions that pop up into your life. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I kind of went off the top of my head for it, but it was really, um, I've really been trying to do this lately, especially, you know, being a guy in today's uh, society. Um, it's interesting. I'll make a video on that next, why uh, people say, you know, men can't feel emotions and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, feeling emotions is, is feminine, which is interesting. So I'm going to get into all that in the next video. If you want to see it, make sure you hit subscribe. Thank you guys so much. You guys are seriously changing my life and I'm grateful for all of you. Um, also, if you want to support me as a creator, click the link in the description down below to sign up for the Patreon. I want to do this channel full time so I don't have to drive Uber anymore. <laughs> you guys are awesome and I'll see you on the next one.